This is why you gotta go outside. You know, there's still a lot of people we've yet to meet in our lives, a lot of moments we've uh, yet to see, a lot of stories and uh, situations, a lot of mysteries we've yet to solve as a society. I was in Buffalo, New York a few weeks ago on purpose, and I was in the uh, in the bathroom at the urinal doing my thing, which is, is a very mindless activity. I don't think you ladies truly know that we don't have all our wits about us at the urinal. We're spacing out, we're just, you have one concern at the urinal, that no fella next to you just goes, Tag, you're it, and just, you know, slaps your cock out of nowhere. That is your one concern, that a game of dick tag doesn't break out unexpectedly, right? So we're in our heads, spacing out, making a lot of time for thoughts that are in the back of our brain to finally make their way to the forefront, right? I'm just like, oh, shit, I haven't, I haven't seen an Orange Julius in a while, right? I'm just fucking spacing out. And I look down beside me, again, I travel all the time, never seen this, Buffalo uh, Airport urinal right beside me, tiny little piece of poop uh, just hanging out by itself in the urinal right beside me. And that is a wonderful Laugh Factory LA reaction. Did you hear about how 30% of you laughed and the rest of you were like, no, dude, sometimes that happens now in this country. So maybe you should adjust. This is concerning on many levels. Uh, two things happened here in my eyes. One, some fella rushed in in a panic, had to pee. That quickly turned into a shit. We've all been there. All right, you walk in, just like, me, yeah, oh, plans are changing, right? Didn't have time to adjust, pulled him down, turned around, took matters into his own hands. Or we've got a new type of fella out there. Oh yeah, we don't have all the info on him that we'd like. He's going to the beat of his own drum, rocking a man bun for sure. Um, and he's pooping out of his penis. And if that's the case, we need to go ahead and put global warming on the back burner and track down these penis poopers and kill them all because that is the wrong kind of different and I don't want to raise kids in that future. Are you clapping like I'm running for office? You got my vote, dude. We'll worry about health care later. Let's get these penis poopers off the freeway. But you know, the kind of dick I've been into lately has been the mature kind, the older men. I see you up there. Hi. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I like about older men is that they know what they're doing, okay? They've been having sex for 20, 30 years, sometimes 40 when I'm really drunk and sad. <laughs> You know, that's a long time to be practicing something, right? They've put in their 10,000 hours. They're experts. They're teaching me things about my body. I didn't even know that there were certain parts in there. I didn't know. They're teaching me. Also, uh, you know, there's older men seem to, for the most part, they have their lives together just a little bit more than the younger men, right? <laughs> Just a little bit, you know, there's nothing worse than hooking up with a guy um, who has roommates. <laughs> it is the worst, it is the worst, right? Because you have to like cut through a living room full of frat boys playing Xbox just to go make some bad choices. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't mind the walk of shame, but I do mind the waddle of regret afterwards. I'm just like, Fuck. what did I do? Oh my God, my mom raised me better than this. It's a good symbiotic relationship, the, the different ages, right? Because they, we can help each other out. Um, you know, they can help me with things that I don't, like adult stuff like taxes, 401ks, investments, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then I can help them with uh, crossing the street. <laughs> you know, helping them to take their medication on time. These kinds of things. It's a good symbiotic relationship. <laughs> I know what you're thinking because everyone says it to me all the time. They say, Caitlin, I think you've got daddy issues. I'm like, mom, quit calling me at 12 in the morning. And I go, that's impossible, okay? There's no way I have daddy issues because my dad wasn't even around when I was growing up. <laughs> Shout out to my dad wherever he is. It's great to be here in old Vegas, though. I moved down here uh, to L.A. with my wife, my uh, just a white couple, too, like nothing interesting about us. Like, if you saw me and my wife walking down the sidewalk, you'd be like, well, they're about to buy a dehumidifier. That's what they're about to do. You wouldn't be wrong. You'd hear me say it. If you broke into our house and looked in our cupboards, you'd be like, Kirkland everything. Okay, I know who lives here. This is a white, this is one Costco member lives here. Absolutely. That's all Costco is. Have you been there late, recently? It's just yeah. middle-aged white people trying to find the biggest mayonnaise. That's all it is. Just guys in cowboy hats being like, this one's the size of a toilet. It's pretty big. I like this. I like how big everything is. Just walking out with a thing of cashews. This is good. This is good. I like this. 
My favorite part of uh, Costco, if you've been, is uh, the men's clothing section. You ever see that? It's just a heap in the middle. No shelves. Oh, no organization. Like, Costco's like, get in there, you fucking baboons. Bunch of cargo shorts, all one size. They got a drawstring, they're all dad size. They'll fit your dad body, get in there, you dumb idiots. All the pockets come preloaded with Kleenex. Just loose Kleenex, pre-snotted on. You're gonna have a great time here at Costco. Loving it, living it. I'm actually gonna be on TV for the first time next week, so please give it up. I'm about to be on Maury. Uh, be honest about that. Uh, I was not the father. My pullout game is amazing. Uh, I know I nutted on her back. I'm gonna be honest about that. Uh, I like this crowd though. That's a cool crowd. Um, Y'all look nice. This is a beautiful crowd. But I've seen better. I want to be honest about it. <laughs> I say that not to be a mean person. I say that because uh, I'm legally blind and I've seen better. Like, like, I really don't know who the fuck in this crowd right now. I don't know. So I am like really legally blind, right? Visually impaired. Uh, when people hear the word blind, legally blind, they automatically think no vision at all. And it's not the case for me, I have some vision. Like I'm blind enough where I can't drive anymore, but I got enough vision where I don't have to play the harmonica. <laughs> like don't Stevie Wonder me yet, don't. I ain't Ray Charles in it yet. Not quite. My glasses get me in a lot of trouble though, I will say that. Uh, one day I cleaned off my glasses, and this girl said, ooh, Ben, you look good without your glasses. I said, uh, bitch, you look good without my glasses. <laughs> And brought me to a brunch and then she brought me and she's a witch so she got me into power crystals so I spent $15 on mimosas and then $97 on three rocks that give you powers and I used to carry them always and I was like really embarrassed about it I had three and I lost one so I had two I had uh, sexual energy and motivation which sound rapey as shit by themselves <laughs> but I carried them with me, and I had a third one that made more sense, but I lost it at a girl's house. I was, uh, take, I was there, I was taking my pants off because the crystals were working, and <laughs> my favorite one fell out of my pocket, and I didn't notice it until the next day when she stepped on it, was like, what's this weird rock doing on my floor? I'm like, I've never seen that before in my entire life. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, and she threw it in the garbage, and I totally let her, because that was easier than me being like, no wait, that's my confidence crystal. No. <laughs> no, I need it. I'm not gonna say that without my fucking confidence crystal. It's rough, I've been on comedy tour. By tour, I mean I've been taking mega bus to different cities, trying to get some love. Did an all women's liberal arts college. Yeah. All white women. And me had a field day with the conversations. I got brave. That was a word they were using a lot. Brave. I'm like, you're so brave. I'm like, thank you. I laid out a challenge. I was like, I'll give one of y'all, just one of y'all, the opportunity to ask me anything you want, and I'll answer it on behalf of all black people. I'm not gonna do that shit tonight. Don't get excited. Put your notes away. <laughs> One girl was brave enough to raise her hand. She had to raise her hand. She put the hair behind the ear. It wasn't even no hair there. She just did it out of habit. <laughs> she was like, Clark, like, oh, like, oh, Clark. Okay, like, oh, what's the deal with Tyler Perry? True story. I missed the all, all black people meeting, so I didn't have an answer ready for it. <laughs> Tyler Perry makes a lot of money dressing up like an old black woman and saying hello and motherfuckers can't get enough, right? He did a movie called Boo Medea Halloween. He's 75, woman, goes to a haunted house, killed at the box office. 
It was a silly movie. It was a silly, sometimes people just don't want to think, right? But there was backlash because it made so much more money than a movie called Birth of a Nation, which was about slavery. People would rather see this nigga dress up like an old woman and be scared throughout a movie than to see slavery. But I'm like, that's not a black thing. Every race does that. She asked me what's the deal with Tyler Perry. I asked her, what's the deal with Adam Sandler? <laughs> you never walked out of one of his movies like, damn, I never thought about it like that, man. Waterboy was a thinker. You've never done that. I give you a bad example. He did a movie called Big Daddy. Ooh, everybody saw Big Daddy. You got an empty Big Daddy DVD case at the house right now, <laughs> propping up the fridge. But it was stupid. Big Daddy still made 175 million domestic. 175 million dollars. You know what didn't make 175 million dollars? Shinless List. Wasn't even close. Adam Sandler is Jewish Medea. It's the same thing <laughs> with a different hat. We are the same. Every race has an embarrassment. But we do things, as Americans, we do things. We, we, just, we just do things that are irritating. Like every four years, we, we pretend that we like soccer. That's, that's annoying to the rest. <laughs> it's annoying to the rest of the world. <laughs> right? Only Americans would do that. Only Americans would show up and think we're gonna beat the world at their sport. <laughs> that we don't play or watch, just. <laughs> We're here now, so. <laughs> what, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> we, we kick it? All right, come on, guys. Let's say we kick it. <laughs> Let's win the whole thing for America. Fuck yeah, America. <laughs> I know we like soccer here in you know, LA, but as a country, it's not even our fifth favorite sport. Like, search your heart, okay? In the US, soccer is right below the WWE. <laughs> and right above hide and seek. That's where, <laughs> that's where soccer is. Think about this game that the whole world plays. The whole world plays this game. Most popular game, and in this game, you can only use your feet. This is the whole game. You know, maybe your head, but this is the whole game. And the rest of the world, they said, hey, you know that, that game we play where you only use your feet? Let's call it football. That makes sense. And then we said, Ah, uh, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do, actually. We have this other game where you use your hands. You catch it, you throw it. Uh, one guy kicks it, one guy kicks it sometimes, yeah. We're gonna call that football. And that game you guys play, I don't know, what do you wear on your feet, socks? We'll call that soccer, how about? I worked at restaurants for years, and I was a like, server, bartender, a lot of my friends still do it. Like, I, like even so, I go out to eat a lot now, and I, like, I'm just having that in mind. I can't, all right, I also just want to find out what atrocity has to take place at a restaurant for me to tell a restaurant server that everything was not great. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what my breaking point is. Like countless times in my life, I have like the worst food, the worst service ever, and I'm always like, everything was divine. Thank you so much. <laughs> If I was being honest right now, I would tell you that this food is utterly inedible and the service from you felt like that of an actual baby waiting on us. But here's a 31% tip, you earned it, thank you. Even given like easy outs, like we'll eat nothing because the food is trash. They'll be like, you guys want a box? We'll be like, no. She'll be like, are you sure it was okay? Like you guys didn't touch anything. I'm like, yeah, it was super good, right? Um, we had a late lunch, so our tum-tums are pretty full here. Uh, Everything was fantastic, especially these fries. I love when fries are super duper wet and freezing cold, so tonight was a real treat for us. Thank you. How do you guys do that? Is it a special secret in-house fry preparation? You just do it the normal way and pour milk on them at the end? Mm -hmm. We'll be back. I don't even know. I think for me to say anything like complaining, I would have to be served a dish with an animal that was actually just like accidentally still alive. And in the moment, I'd still probably be apologetic and blame myself. Like, well, hey, yeah, no, so far, so good. Uh, the asparagus, dynamite. Yeah, there's a perfect char in there. Oh my God. Uh, the salmon, I have not tried the salmon yet because it left. Yeah, it's, it's under their table over there. Um, it's flopping a lot. Yeah, they seem pretty steamed. 
I'm so sorry, was that my fault? I didn't read the whole menu. Was I supposed to punch it when I got here? It's like an interactive, immersive, experiential dining. Stab it, spin the tip. I'm not gonna send it back. Oh my God, you guys are so busy. Just, um, you know what? Yeah, just bring me a to-go box. I'll go over there, I'll wrangle him up. Um, bring him home, he can live in my bathtub until he dies. Yeah, I'll leave the water running so it feels like he's kind of going upstream for his final days. I think he'll appreciate that. Dessert? Yeah, we got a little bit of time. Just a quick order of those milk fries and we'll fuck off out of here, okay? <laughs> See you guys next week. Mm -hmm.